Hey guys, so we're starting our still life one this week. Um, lots of good stuff uh, in the thumbnails and gestural sketches. Uh, so I got a list of things that I noticed and we're gonna talk about that, taking these drawings from start to finish. I'm gonna do one quick drawing. This will be like how you lay out your 15 minute drawing. And then I'll do another, another quick drawing, but more detailed and talk about uh, directional shading and methods uh, to get those bright highlights and those dark darks. So, why it's important to zoom in. When you only have 15 minutes, you're meant to draw the entire thing, your entire area. So you don't wanna draw this whole still life out in 15 minutes, because that'd be poor time management. You might be able to get it all laid out, but you wanna start getting detail, you wanna start dropping highlights, you wanna get a complete picture. So what we want to do, we want to pick an interesting area of our still life here um, to kind of focus on. Remember, we want a tight composition. We want things going off our pages in at least three different directions. So um, I'm going to take my vine rather than pencil because when you do the pencil, it's good for clean things. Um, but when you only have 15 minutes to capture something, this is gonna be your best friend. So I'm looking here. I think I can do this section in about five minutes. So I'm gonna start doing my gestural. I'm drawing with my whole arm, remember, whole arm. You don't want little wrists because we want nice fluid motions. And we're gonna do that quick gestural drawing. And it's gonna look weird. It's not gonna look good. That's that's what you're gonna have right there. Uh, something that looks just about like this. Um, so I'm gonna start kind of uh, going into things right now and laying them out. I'm paying more attention to uh, my still life and looking less on this page and more at my still life so I can really see how things move and relate with each other. And you'll be surprised how much more accurate it is than um, say if you were just to stare down at your paper here. And I saw a lot of you guys were drawing figures, which is great. Those are, those are gonna be your harder objects, but you're gonna learn a lot from them and I'm not gonna discourage that. But if you do find yourself having trouble with that time management, Think about choosing some less, uh, less complicated things. All right, I got my cat pretty much all sketched out. Also think about selective editing. Just because something is how it is and you observe it like that doesn't mean it translates well to your paper sometimes you got to make little adjustments i'm not saying make the whole thing up but when it comes down to crunch time and it's looking odd it's totally okay to be like okay move this line move this line uh this is causing perspective issues so i'm going to shift it over here that is a totally valid thing to do And see, I'm using my arm to go down, that fluid movement. And I'm kind of looking over here, here, to make sure I'm, I'm still right. Because in this planning stage, you want it more in this planning stage because if you move too far along and something's askew, you, you've kind of wasted all that time because you have to go back in and correct it. So correct it here before you move on.
like, like, like here, okay. I can see this little area. I don't really like that. Um, I think it looks awkward and it's a weird division of the space because I like this shape here. I don't like it so much here. So that selective editing, I'm just gonna move this to the top and extend that. So that goes off the page there. Great thing about the charcoal and it's gone. You fixed it. Okay, so just a few more things, drop down. Okay, this is where your ruler comes in handy. I saw lots of things getting off. So what you're gonna do at this point, you come here with your ruler down and you can hold it right up against the object, see what angle you're at, come right back down. And it's very helpful for these cylindrical objects. Pick an anchor point, put that down, put that down, and then you can use that as an anchor point to connect right there. So say you've got this sketched out. This is when you start dropping in your shadow and your highlight. So I'm gonna start fleshing some of this stuff out and I'm really just gonna shade like this. It, it just random movement, um, sort of like a hatch. But you'll see how it shapes up here in a second. And I feel like I'm running out of time. You're gonna feel like you're running out of time too. Let's see, where am I at? seven and a half minutes, talk for about two. So when you find yourself with not a lot of time left, there's things you can do to make your image look more complete. So I, I probably don't have time to go in and shade that much, but I can put in a few dark things to, uh, to contrast with this other stuff. So you establish a limited value scale. So it makes it look more developed than it really is. So I can take my finger and start using it to shape out some of those lines. And that's an implied line rather than sketching it all out. as one happy cat. So, you know, didn't have time to get to this stuff. What I can do to make it look more completed is quickly drop in a background. I'm just using the side of my charcoal. And this is another thing, don't leave those halos around, but don't worry about messing things up. See, I, it's so malleable that you can easily go around and move and contort your wrist while you're moving your arm. And if you say you slip, you get it over here. All you do is fix it up right there. So this is probably what most of your guys' 15 minute drawings are gonna look like, right, right here. We didn't get that much established, but we got to study these objects. So the next time we sit down to draw them, we know more about them. We know where the light hits, where your strong shadows are, um, you know, stuff like that. So let's, let's move this drawing and see what a completed drawing would be. So we talked about our composition. We talked about drawing with our, we began to talk about how to shade things. So let's, let's talk more about that. We wanna see extreme lights and darks, the differences, because um, that push and pull is gonna make your, uh, your drawing more dimensional and it's gonna show depth. So I'm gonna begin. It's always a good idea to draw to your side to get those big swatches. See, I'm moving the direction of that. So, because if you just go up and down, it's going to flatten out. So, see the difference between that and that? We're moving around the object. Oh, 
can see I can see that cube right there is not correct, not leveled out. So what I can do, take that right there, then bring it back to this point. That's going to make it straighter. So you want to do this stuff before you get it too built up. Otherwise, it's going to look really, really wonky. You see what I did right there? I measured that right there. Throw it back. Right there. And we have a straighter uh, plane that's in perspective. So I have the basic sort of shadow and light on here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take that compressed charcoal and I'm going to start going in the refining areas. See, I'm just using my finger. You can use a blending tool, but honestly, the blending tool, it can be good for showing um, hatch marks or whatever, but when you're working this large, it's going to look a little odd. And you're going to get messy anyways because it's charcoal. So I recommend just using your fingers. And it's a lot quicker. We want to focus on getting these implied lines because the more harsh lines you have, the less uh, realistic it's going to look. And I mean, we're not shooting for realism. Um, we're, we're trying to find a naturalistic representation, but you know, you, you, you want to try and really capture what's there. And sometimes you want to um, accentuate it, make things a little darker, make things a little lighter. So you have uh, that contrast. And see, with my finger, I'm doing the same thing, that directional shading, that directional shading. And sometimes your drawings can get too busy adding too much detail. Be wary of that. Love this cat. I got this in Washington, um, and I had to uh, take it as a carry-on, so I had to carry this cat all the way from Washington to um, Oklahoma City on the lap. Got some funny looks. During this semester, you're going to see how many <laughs> ceramic animals I have, and you're going to think it's absolutely ridiculous, but I'm cool with it. I've made my choices. All right, another great place for editing. I don't like that negative space. So, it's gone. Does it look odd? No. Is it what's there? No. But it's just fine. So we're building on top of these things. Directional shading. Be careful how much detail you add to things like bottles when it concerns like writing. It can end up looking a little odd. So like this just has a little bit of writing. Uh, has a swatch of color and maybe a few things like that. That's that's all I would all I would add. Your stuff will break. That's fine. It's still very usable. See, that's a little bit off, but that's why we draw on the charcoal. Very easy to move. If 
you didn't have uh, the charcoal, if you used the pencil for the initial drawing, it wouldn't be that easy to edit out. I'm about to show you one more thing when we get almost done. I'm not gonna work through this entire drawing because we still have a few things to cover. Directional shading with the finger, stipple out. This has a lot of highlights up here. Directional shading. All right. What I want to get to is your highlights. So let's see. We can begin to blend, blend things in drawing directly in the charcoal so we get this gradient, this nice gradient. And, uh, you know, I, I just moved that with the charcoal, so I'm just going to draw into it with the, char with, the, with the chalk, fix that up. Easy as that. Radial highlights, when it hits the, hits the glass or the plastic, and it's just right on the cusp of the corner. We want to capture those. Um, another thing you can do for that, I got a million different erasers. You were only required to get the pink, the needed. Um, I did put Sumo on there, but uh, you don't have to get one. So how these can help with your highlights, with your needed eraser, you can shape it and draw into things. You can put like little details take things away. Uh, if you wanted to do a gradient in the background, you know, you could take away a little bit, you know, a little design that clouds. And then this is going to be weaker. It's going to take away less, but it's going to give you that fine tip. And then you can come in with your pink eraser and work over that to get a brighter Highlight. Remember, we're still paying more attention to this than we are this. And then the sumo. The sumo is amazing. If you can find one of these, please pick it up because it takes away so much. So nice. And you can draw in, and it really retains its, uh, its buoyancy. OK. And then um, you were told to pick up some uh, Copic Opaque ink. Um, I've loaded mine into a, uh, a pen. You can use a brush. Um, I'll show you guys how to do that soon, too. Um, and then we can go ahead and draw on top of that to make it even brighter, to make it stick out more. And we can use little details all, without, all within the image. So this is your quick little go through on um, how, to, how to develop things and get them up. The, <coughs> the next thing I want to talk about are some of your shapes. Yeah, we, we sort of talked about um, doing the ellipses and uh, cylinders, but I thought it'd be better just to show you separately how to do each of those with with the ruler. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the sphere. We're going to do the sphere first. I saw a lot of trouble with spheres. So what you want to do with, with your arm, with your arm draw, with your arm. And you want to go around several times so you can see, try and pick out the one that works the best, then you outline that one. But I'm still using my arm, so you can get rid of the superfluous stuff. And then the way you directionally shade the uh, sphere is going around 
that. I'm fading it up and in. Really building that up. I'm going to do the drop shadow. And shadows are going to have a really, really dark spot towards the base of the object. So that's going to be darker. Make sure those little, those little subtle changes are really what's going to sell the image as 3D. Oh no. That's fine. We just build that up and up and up and up and up. And let's let's shade this super dark. So let's take this in. Let's shade the whole thing. Say 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 we got the whole thing shaded. We still want it to be directional. Let's talk about digging the highlights out of this. So we don't really need the needed eraser because we're not doing any specific small work. So let me bring back this. You stay somewhere. Okay. So start working that. Dig in a little bit more. Coming in. Rider eraser, we're just building that up. Yeah. And then we can come back in with our chalk. Hit the brightest area of that and get that, that radial shading along the side. And see, I got a little bit wonky. I followed the wrong line. All you need to do with the charcoal, twist your finger. And it's normal again. And then I just go on top, hit the highlight, hit the highlight, hit the highlight. Okay, that's that's basic sphere. So let's talk about the cube, break this cube again, break that down. So we wanna start out with our gestural drawing. Let's try and draw this cube. I'm gonna make it really wonky, how about that? Let's say a, a totally off base. There's my cube. So I'm gonna hold that right there. Let's see what that angle is. Well, that angle is pretty much all right. So I can use that as the waypoint. Come back to the other side. See how it goes on this side, holding it up. Goes that way. All right, holding it up. This is easier with a small ruler, but I cannot find mine. And then take it to the other side. Yeah, it's way easier with a 12 inch ruler. And you can make it too long if you want, so you can cut it off whenever. Take it back over here. And make it however long you want. And then we can use this stuff up top. So now that's correct. Use this to go down here. And we can fix up that box, that long line. Just move it, just move it, just move it. Better cube. Okay, and the way you'd shade the cube, this is a good time to talk about transparent objects too. Directional shading. Directional shading. And you're following those lines as the waypoint. 
Now transparent objects, what you can do is build up the shadow first of what's within the object. So let's say we can see through this cube. So we have that. We we want to sort of blur because we can we can see the hint of what's in it, but not really the whole thing. And then we'd come over with our chalk and start building things up. That that that, that cloudiness and getting the highlights in. And we're still directionally shading, even though we're drawing uh, what's in back. We're going over this because it's directional. And then you would build up your highlights over that. And then say, you know, you can come back in, clear that up, define that some more. Okay, cube. Got it. Cool. All right. Then ellipses. I saw some problems with ellipses. And they propped us up. So ellipses can be kind of difficult because they're skewed. I'm looking at this one right here. That's moving towards me again. Do that. Okay, so same basic thing. You're you're breaking it down into shapes. So you're still roughly sketching it out. You can see the skew. Maybe it goes more this way. Maybe it goes more this way. But now that you have this, you can see which one matches up more. Would be that line. All right, and then we can see the edge. You can hold up your ruler, kind of eye what direction that goes, pull it from there, then pull it from here, and then we follow it around. And we can do the sketchiness so we can figure it out. And there's our ellipse. Start shading. And this is how we really want to capture the shadow and light on those shorter drawings. When we have a lot more time, we can really work on those gradients, but we want to capture um, the widest range of value we can in the shortest amount of time. So, okay, one last thing, and then I'll let you guys go. We are going to talk about this one more time, doing cylinders. Or actually, since we did the cylinder, let's do a cup. Because this one has a lot of things going on with it. And I saw a lot of you guys use cups. So easy way you can do cups. See how I did this kind of tornado thing? Then I link up the two. Of course, we can fix it just like we fixed the cube by holding up our rulers, bringing it back each side. And then the way we shade is much like the cube that you could see through. We're having the direction of what's going inside like that. And then what's going outside like that. And then of course you can darken up things. So the order that you'd you'd go is get your get your lines established with the fine charcoal lightly. Then build that up to a point where you need your darker darks through your compressed. And then you would go in and work um, with your chalk or conte. And then, or, uh, no, that, 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 that's wrong. Eraser, chalk, and then um, your ink, uh, your opaque ink. And really, please do not be afraid to mess things up. Look at how malleable this is. If I wanted to go in and make that line dark again, it, it, it's, it's nothing, it's nothing. So don't, please don't, do this when you're um, 
finishing up and dropping in your backgrounds where we, 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 we get this little halo here. That tells me you were too timid to really work it in. Um, even better if I'm sure you guys will develop enough control to just right by there. Another option is just starting off by a tone paper, you know, and working on top of that and choosing to do more of the eraser work, you know. Um, let's do another cup. We have our cup, and so we have our dark darks here. We can just start working in like that. And go lighter and lighter. It's all about pressure. But we're still doing the directional, but we're kind of doing the reverse by um, taking away rather than adding. And if anybody is actually really interested in doing that, um, email me and we can, uh, I'll, I'll do another uh, demo like that. So any questions, email me. Uh, you guys know what you need to do this week. Uh, you guys got till Sunday. I am available all the time to do uh, Zoom uh, tutoring. You just gotta give me about a day heads up so I can plan for it. Um, I'm available, send me your images. If you're having trouble with something, be like, hey Spencer, what can I do? Why is this happening? Um, just let me know and I got you. Uh, well, that's it and I will talk to you guys soon.